Alright guys, this is an unexpected matchup. Uh, without getting too deep into it, because I, I really don't like to spend a lot of time on drama and negative things. Uh, basically, BKC, who as you all know is in the main event, uh, he played his round one match against Mana that's already here on the channel for you guys to check out. Did not win that set and opted after losing that set to not continue playing in the tournament. I don't want to say too much about that. Um, knowing him better than most and for a long time and on a kind of personal level, it was clear to me that he was not in the right mindset to play from the get-go. Uh, it wasn't really a results-oriented thing, the fact that he didn't win the set. Uh, you could tell from just his nicknames in in the match, like even when it was game one or even when he was up 1-0 in the set, that he just didn't feel like playing and wasn't in the right headspace. And certainly from the private conversation that I had with him, it was very clear that he wasn't in the right mindset or headspace to be playing in this kind of tournament. So, you know, while I certainly don't at all appreciate players dropping out and it's not the most respectful thing to me or my staff or the donors, I, I think that in this specific instance, it probably was for the best that Kev did not continue with the tournament. So we're going to leave that at that, but like I said, I, I would really appreciate if you guys can just let it go, not focus on drama, don't harass him, give him a hard time, any of that. I'm just letting you know what happened, but I want to just move on from it. So the question becomes, what do you do now? Because there's obviously a free spot now because it's double a limb. Uh, he was supposed to be in the lower bracket, and now he's not. Uh, so the solution that we came up with... Uh, there were a couple different ideas, but what I decided to do is have the two play-in finalists, the guys who lost to the eventual winners, play against each other for the spot. Uh, so that was Kurtz, who lost to Jabba, and Watermess, who lost to Endil. They're now going to play against each other, and the winner of this match, which is a best of three, is going to sub into BKC's spot uh, and be in the loser's bracket. Both of them understand that. They're both okay with it. And I think it's fitting, since like they did actually lose play-ins, so I mean they can consider that their first loss of the tournament, if you want to think about it that way. They do get to be in the main event, they're just starting 0-1. It's the best I got. There's no great solution in this kind of crappy situation, but it's the best thing I was able to come up with. So it gives these guys another chance, and for those of you who were rooting for these players in the main event, even though it didn't look like it after they lost, well, now one of them will be. So with all that out of the way, let's get into it. It is a best of three between these two for a spot in the lower bracket starting in round two. So you'll see one of these guys in the next round. Let's find out who. Kurtz is on the bottom. Watermess is on the top. That's going to be a Mens lead and a Zapdos lead, respectively. Intimidate. It's going to be a switch because maybe he didn't want to pass the Intimidate. And that's going to end up with a Fori. Here's Curse, which is going to be against the T-Tar switch. And Zapdos comes in, checking for EQ, which good thing he did, because Kurtz did in fact have Earthquake. It looks like he's opting for a physical offense team against, well, obviously a 4 TSS from Watermass. Shadow Ball coming down. Might be that uh, Curse EQ Ball Boom set that is so popular. Really good coverage set, really good bait set. Looking like a physical or mixed offense for Kurtz. Titar got roared in there. And Watermess is just going to surf it, just in case it gets cute. Goes Focus Punch, goes Rock Slide, what have you. Ops for Earthquake here. Certainly doesn't look like he has a stab move, so it might very well be last move Boom. Claydol also probably is Boom on this kind of team. But Kuna's is going to opt for Rest here, as opposed to continuing the aggression. So now the Lax is back in again. Now Fori, as the Lax begins to curse up, got to be really careful here if you're Mess. It's very tempting to start spiking up, but... If you let that lax get too big, you're going to have yourself a problem. And that's curse number two. It gets out of hand real fast. And that's enough. He pulls it back. He goes to Zapdos. But that's curse number three. I don't think he has a normal move other than boom. So no body slam or return here. But even if it is Shadow Ball, which it is, it's going to hurt a lot. 72% that's going to do it plus three. Normal move would have probably killed there. Dawn fan switch from Watermass into the Tar. Interesting. Haven't seen a lot of Dawn fan in general, and Dawn fan plus Fori is even more unusual, so that has got to be a Pursuit Tar for Watermass. All of those Pokemon 
Uh, the Fori, the Dawn Fan, and to a lesser extent the Coon all really hate Gengar and need it to be out of the way. So, gotta, gotta, gotta be a Pursuit Tar. There's an explosion for Meta that's going to trade with Kuhn, leaving us, of course, since that is the first knockout and a double knockout in a 5-5, to and there is still a hidden poke in the back for Kurtz. Titar in, Dawn Fan in, a double to Mence, which I'm not sure what he's representing here. Are we looking at a mixed men? So are we threatening a special attack here? Yep, there's Dragon Claw, so we're looking at a fully special or a mixed men's for Kurtz. Dragon Claw did 27% there. Gonna back off. Here's Dahl. Dahl on Bliss now. Still last poke hidden in the back for Kurtz. Could be something like his own Coon. Could be an Aerodactyl, a Gyarados. Something along those lines. Something aggressive and mean. Here comes Curse. Uh, I don't think what I believe to be a special tire is going to be all that exciting, but he's going to stay in and go for it anyway. Crunch 24%, like I said, not all that exciting. Will easily die to Earthquake should he stick it out. And he does. Crunch and a Specs drop. Earthquake, down goes t -tar. I think that he doesn't need to worry about removing Gengar. I think it's extremely unlikely that it's last poke Gar for Kurtz, but I mean, it could be. The critical hit there did not matter. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't have even mattered without the Specs drop, but yeah, crit there didn't matter is all you need to know. And the last poke is not Gengar. Leaves us in a 4-4 four four situation. Last poke Pert is revealed. Seemingly Endeavor Pert as it subs up here. And goes for Endeavor, which actually, despite being pretty healthy, the Swampert is still going to do a lot to the Bliss. Gets her down to a third. Hydro Pump there is going to miss, unfortunately. And Bliss is going to soft-boiled up and receive its own wish. So back up to 100 here. Endeavor back to exactly 33. And wish again. Hydro Pump here in non-torrent range has no chance to kill without a crit. So opting for the freeze, which is more mathematically likely than the crit, is in fact the right play. And Kurtz is going to do it again. No freeze just yet. Now Zapdos comes in. That eats an Ice Beam. That could die to a crit, and it obviously doesn't want to be frozen, but otherwise it'll be okay. It'll eat the Wish. 37% from Ice Beam, negate it, and then some from the Wish. And now back to Blissey. Endeavor Pert is one of those mons that's either really easy or really difficult to deal with, depending on the team. If you have something like Milo and Bliss or Starmie and Bliss or whatever, it's not a problem because you can just keep staying in with one, recover, 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 switch to the other, recover, 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 stall it out pretty easily. If you don't have stuff like that, it can be really difficult to switch into. It can put a lot of pressure on you and make it so it's going to do damage to something one way or another. And finally, it does in fact switch out. The T-Tar comes back in for Kurtz. Still an even game at 4-4. Four four. Dawn Fan in. And man, the thing is so damn bulky. It is such a good physical T-Tar counter. It takes nothing from Earthquake. 20%. Thing does not care. Hidden power there against Claydol. I assume his HP rocks since it did so little and was resisted there. And it's certainly not going to be a special hidden power on Dawn Fan. I don't know what its special attack stat is, but it's like negative three or something along those lines. There is Dragon Claw coming down. And Dahl coming back. Eats an Ice Beam on the way in. Definitely not going to survive another one after taking 54% from that one. And out of the way it goes. Interesting that Mence comes in here. Yeah, I mean, he must have been very confident that... The doll was not going to blow there. I mean, that's otherwise it's really risky because Watermass, had he stayed in and clicked Ice Beam again, would have killed the Salamence there. But he was he was afraid of the Clay Doll potentially blowing up, so he had to get out of the way. Toxic is going to put a clock on it and encourage it even more to blow, which is why he keeps going to Fortress there. Because obviously, if there is an explosion, he wants that to be on the Fortress and not any of the other pokes that don't resist it. And the Zapdos is getting repeatedly chipped down as well. I mean, that's only 11%, but the Sand is making it so it effectively doesn't have lefties. Zapdos itself is only down to 44%, which is getting lower. Dahl comes in again, 48%. And again, faithfully, there's Fori. But Kurtz keeps using this now to his advantage, knowing that the Fori keeps coming in on the Dahl. He keeps doubling on it and using it as a way to get Mence in. So the mind games begin for these two players. If Kurtz keeps using it as a pivot, that's great for him. 
But what about the one time that Mess says, all right, fuck it. If you're going to do that, I'm not going to switch for you. And is that going to be the one time that Kurtz decides, well, joke's on you. Now I'm going to explode with Claydol. Yeah, it's all mental here, and it very well will matter what the Claydol does eventually blow up on, if it even gets the chance to do so. Endeavor Pert roared away. Zapdos lower and lower now at just 23%. Won't survive a Dragon Claw from that HP. Brick Break instead nails Bliss, only 39%, but it will be good enough to kill her here should she stay in. And she doesn't. Fire Blast there. I think that must have been intended to hit Fori, but it still did a decent chunk against Dawnfan. HP Grass, if he has that, would certainly kill. And that's what he's going to go for here. Protect is going to show Water Mess the bad news. Mixed Man seemingly a pretty big issue given the current health of everything on the other side. He may have to fish for a Fire Blast miss, which is pretty terrible, but that might be his best bet at this point. And that was a great move. Goes to Zapdos on the Fire Blast, kills 2 PP, and gets the miss. So if he's trying to stall Fire Blast PP, this is a great way to do it. Fury again in on something other than Fire Blast. Will he make the same play again and go back to Zapdos? No, he stays in on Dragon Claw. Water Mess outplaying Kurtz there. Kurtz not able to pull the trigger on Fire Blast, and he's going to lose his Ments, which otherwise would have been a nightmare for Water Mess. The psychological games in that case won by Water Mess. Can't get Kurtz to get the Fire Blast off and manages to blow in the Dragon's face and avert a game-winning threat. Great play, but will it be great enough? Water Mess, even though I really like the way that he played that, is still losing this game at this time. Claydol coming in is bad news because now the explosion is inevitable. Water Mess will lose something one way or another. Gonna go for Dawn Fan. There's the boom. It won't survive. And now it's only the Blissey against Titar and Swampert. There's a chance here for Water Mess, but a lot of things have to happen. Certainly a crit rock slide is not one of those things. And I believe that ends the game. Earthquake now should be good enough. And it is. Blissey goes down, and Kurtz is going to take game one. This one really close, and there was definitely mental stuff going on. I, I really liked this one. I thought it was an entertaining game of Pokemon. But at the end, the suspense, unfortunately, was taken out of it with the immediate crit. Made it so there was really not too much to do at that point. After the crit, anybody can click Earthquake and finish the game. Kurtz did exactly that, and he takes a 1-0 lead into Game 2, looking to win this one or potential Game 3 to punch his ticket to the main event of Kalos Invitational 5 in unexpected fashion, to say the least. Here's Game 2. They're in the same positions. Kurtz on the bottom, Water Mess on the top. Zapdos BP out of the meta matchup. Rock Slide, well, good thing he BP'd out. That would have nailed him, but unfortunately he does miss there as the Coon comes in. I say the same thing that I said before. I feel like every single set that I narrate has a su uh, Suicune in it. I feel like it has been so obscenely popular uh, in this particular Kalos Invitational. And again, I know that it's a good poke. I know that it's OU. I know that it's like not ever not popular. But I feel like it's even more popular in this tour than ever before. I feel like I'm seeing that poke constantly these days. Anyhow, not to get too far behind, CM from B and Sub from the other B for Water Mass. Hidden Power Fire breaks it, and now they both have a Calm Mind boost. This could get dangerous real quick if they get into a critical hit war, but nope, Water Mass not playing that game. He doubles back to Salamence, takes the HP Fire even at plus one, no problem, 15%, and probably scares off the B here. If Baton passes out to Coon, the Intimidate not relevant here on obviously a non-physical poke in the Coon. Dragon Dance happens. And gonna stay in and chance it, but even at plus one, that is not a lot of damage. 33% hidden power, who cares? Immediately sniped down by the plus one Ice Beam. Zero chance to survive. And Kurtz takes the lead with the first knockout, 6-5. Double Edge coming down for Water Mass. Great chip damage there, 46% on the incoming Zapdos. Wow, and Gyra has the balls to stay in. He DDs here as the Zapdos BPs out. That was very risky on his part, but 
And it wasn't even really too much gain because even after he successfully pulled off that high risk play, he doesn't even stay in on the following turn. I don't get why you stay in and risk that if the reward in your mind isn't worth it, if you're just going to switch out anyway after pulling that off. But that's what happened, and now we have the B on the Coons, still with the 6-5 lead for Kurtz. Three unrevealed between them. And Meta and Charizard here, previously unrevealed for Kurtz, so one unrevealed now for each. Stab Fire Blast does a bazillion, but not enough. Rock Slide, however, on that 4x weakness is obviously enough. And that is going to tie the game up at 5-5, five to five, though there are some very weakened Pokemon for both players. So, now Magneton comes in, not gaining lefties, takes two Thunderbolts, and not very well. It also finds itself paralyzed, but it nevertheless manages to kill the Zapdos on the way out. It is now Kurtz, who has gotten himself Magnet pulled. Is Rachi, which was the final poke for him, so all pokes revealed. He is now trying to find a full power against the Mag. And he's going to kill that, so now he's behind a sub. Leaves us in a 4-4. Four to four. Salabi going to be the answer, apparently, and looks like we're getting into a combine war. One boost each, but Salabi's faster, and in exchange, Rachi is behind the sub. This could get messy. I mean, obviously, a key factor here is that in the sand, the Rachi's gaining lefties, and the Salabi is not. I don't know. It's, it's going to be tricky here. This is very RNG-heavy. One's faster, one's not, one's behind a sub, one's not. One is sand immune, one's not. Just waiting. They are both boosting up the whole way. Yeah, I mean, they're all in at this point. Neither one can switch, so here we go. Comes down to a good old combine critical hits fest. Now they both have a substitute. Jirachi obviously much healthier than Celebi here. Max boosts, here we go. Thunderbolt, not Ice Punch, interesting. Substitute, okay. Thunderbolt, doesn't pop it, sure. Giga Drain. Uh, wah, wah, wah. I, I thought this whole time, if he was doing this, he would have HP Fire. How can you ever, ever, ever win this by Giga Draining the Jirachi? Yeah. I, uh, man, I thought this was going to be a little more exciting. This is clearly going to be a win for Kurtz eventually. Not only is the Giga Drain going to run out of PP, but the damage is pathetic. It does 8%. 8%. There's a para that, like, doesn't matter. Man, I'm so disappointed. I thought it would have HP Fire. Got to be almost out of Giga Drains, too. He's got two. Maybe if they both crit, he'll do 32% and kind of, sort of, almost halfway kill the Rachi. Man. Anticlimactic. Now he switches to Gyra. Okay, I guess the play is to outspeed it, Earthquake the sub away, and then have Flygon deter it. But no, Gyarados is not even faster. Outsped and insta-killed by the T-Bolt. Flygon is faster, so that at least gets rid of the sub, but it's going to instantly die to the last move, which isn't Ice Punch, it's Hidden Power. And there is the concession for Water Mess. Cannot deal with this Jirachi at all. This one not anywhere near as close as the previous. Kurtz is going to walk all over him, get the clean 2-0 victory, and he is going to eliminate Water Mess from the main event effectively for the second time and punch his unexpected ticket to the main event. So Kurtz is going to fill in in the vacant BKC, uh, BKC spot in the lower bracket. He's going to be against Cowboy Dan in round two, which is who BKC would have been against had he stayed in. And we're going to go from there. Maybe Kurtz will only be in the main event for one round. Maybe he'll make a deep lower bracket run. That match in real time has not played out yet, so who knows? But I'm looking forward to seeing it. So, uh, we took a weird path there, but congratulations, Kurtz. You are now in the main event. Let's see what you can do. In the meantime, if you guys have enjoyed watching this video, and if you've enjoyed Callus Invitational as a whole, 
I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in round two because this really truly was the final match of round one.